good, hi, how you going? Hey, Annapolis here, you're acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to me video. We'll get some sizes up there first in centimeters and inches, and also some colors going up the screen for you as well. That way you can watch this video if you're a beginner and see what's happening, what colors we're gonna use, what mistakes I do and don't make, and the way you can approach this tutorial when you wanna paint along with it, all right? So, um, now I've got a picture here of a reference picture I'm gonna use. I'm gonna mix it up a bit. I'm gonna bring you over here and show you what I've done to the canvas. And I'm just gonna show you how I've mapped it in from there as well from the reference picture. And try and remember, it's not a big must, but it does help if you're gonna use a reference, try not to be caught trying to make every exact detail the same as your reference. Use the reference as a reference only. If it's got a sky, put the sky in that area. If it's got rocks down there, put your rocks down there. Don't try and make it exact. You can if you want and if you're capable, but you don't have to, all right? So I've got the sky. I've got that band of rocks going up on an angle to the left-hand side. We've got a waterfall, and under the waterfall is like a cave. So in my canvas here, I've done the top of that rock, the bottom of it, in the inside area of the cave and pretty much on a horizon line where that water's gonna go. So now I wanna map in the sky. I know I want that sky, it's a warm sky. You can do whatever sky you want. First things first, I've got some student craft poster paint, flowing white paint, just a soft body cheap paint and I'm mixing it with retarder. So we'll start up here in the sky area and I just wanna get all this mapped in and I'm preparing the foundation for our sky. Now I'm gonna pick up that paint. There's that line, hopefully you can see that. Just come to there, because I don't need to get all retarded paint medium within there. Oops, stuff's flicking everywhere. And now I'm gonna massage that left and right, just get it nice and smooth like that. Now in that reference picture, it was nice and warm around here. So watch what colours I use to get that kind of sky. We've got the yellow ochre and Indian yellow. They're going to make up a beautiful caramel yellow in the sky. I've got the blue I want to use. I'm using cerulean blue. And I've got a warm colour here, which is quinacridone magenta. And I've also got some grey here just to darken that blue as well. So what I'm going to do first, I've cleaned my putter on a brush. And I'm just going to get this blue and paint it with some grey all right get the grey the way you want because it's not a daytime blue sky it's sort of dusk afternoon and using the picture of a reference i want the warm bit around the middle here so this is going to just i'm just going to go like smiley faces with this and i want to get it see that it's grey it's afternoon it's evening it's getting night time it's cup of tea time and dinner time in the sky we want to get this in the sky see that white underneath it's lightening this up and it's allowing it to flow on this canvas like bloody oil painting eh but without the chemicals and the smell anyway i'm getting this around the sky a bit down here i'm just looking at the reference and it's quite dark over here and doing these smiley face strokes sort of gives you that sky over your head look i feel so what I'm doing, I'm allowing enough room to get the magenta in there. Now I'm getting the quinacridone magenta. So we're getting a bit of this on there and this is gonna mix with that blue. See the way I've pulled it onto my brush? And my brush is loaded up all the way along the edge there instead of just dabbing it in and hoping for the best. So I'm not gonna go down here. I'm just gonna come from the blue and this is going to mix with the blue. I'm going light, I don't wanna go too dark. I want this to mix with the blue to get that, um, this is gonna create the warm values within the sky, and it's gonna stop that yellow when I add it, going green, when it, if it, so it's not gonna mix with the blue. Now I'm feeling I might have to bring some of the blue back over this, which is fine, and I'm feeling, let's get that up there, beautiful. See, I'm just softening those edges. I can bring the blue back into this the best way whichever way I want, because it's my world, I'm the artist here and I'm creating it with that brush. Can you see that okay? Yeah. It's gonna have some white here as well. See, now what I'm doing, I'm using the tip of the brush where there's not much paint on it, and I'm pushing it within that blue, massaging it down. Now, like I said, I'll pick up some more blue if I feel, 
just to, there we go, sit some of that back where it's too in your face magenta -y. There we go, that's good. I'm just gonna massage that in now. Now I've cleaned that same brush. I wanna pick up the yellow, put that in there first. It's gonna be a bit loud and yellowy bright, but that's okay. We're gonna sit it down with the oxide when we put that coat on there. So we'll get all this warm yellow in that white area. Boom, 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 yep. Now I'll start just oozing it, smiley face, stroking it into that magenta. And over this side, see it's gonna change that magenta a bit, which is great. When we add the white clouds, it's gonna add some luster and lusciousness and a lot of bullshit in this sky. I'll extract that a little bit. There we go. Now I haven't washed the brush, I just gave it a wipe on the tablecloth there, picking up some of the yellow oxide. And where I feel, I wanna sit some of this down, or slice it in there, I'm just gonna do this. This just adds nighttime yellow, in my opinion. Tell you what, the way that yellow mixed with the colors that I already had on there, it's pretty much done this job for me. I didn't know that, so it's working good. Now these clouds, they're not gonna be fluffy clouds, they're gonna be like misty, gap-filling clouds, okay? Now the next color we're gonna to go to is the titanium white out of the tube, and I've got a couple of fan brushes, a small and a larger one, and a brush to blend some turmoil within those clouds. See, the sort of clouds we're going for, if you look in the reference picture here, they're like, they're just like mist and fog type of clouds. That's what I wanna put in my sky now. So I've loaded the fan brush. Now I want to start in the middle first and get some intense white here over the rock. This is going to mix with that yellow. And I want some spider arms with this. Look at that, some spider arms. See these arms I'm creating? That's reaching out. Go and look at the depth. Look at me in the cloud there. Look at me in the middle of the painting. And I want something haloing over that as well. I'll pick up a bit more white. So what I'm virtually creating here, you'll see when I blend this, is this window of lusciousness here. Now I've stuck that on. Everything is wet. It's very wet. Now I've got a, a very flat brush from the hardware store. Grab yourself a towel, cloth or something. Now we, wanna, we don't wanna paint that as a cloud. We're gonna blend turmoil carefully. Just control it, stop and see where you're going. Okay, bang, wipe it. This is how easy it is to do something that looks so complicated. Uh, practice, practice, practice will turn you into a master. If you want to master something, practice it and practice it, and you become a master of what you were practicing. Okay, now I'm turmoiling that. I've looked at the reference just for once. I don't want to keep looking at it a hundred million times and confuse my mind with, oh, I'm not quite getting it the way it is in the reference. You don't want a reference to disturb your direction where you're going. See how that's happening? Now here, I know, I just wanna twist that and spider it out, feather it out into that yellow. And this is the intense warm area in the middle of the sky here. And you can do this. You can do anything you bloody want, so long as you realize, wow, it just takes practice. A lot of people are telling me my clouds are nice, but believe me, it's taken me years to get where I am now, okay? It didn't just happen overnight, and it takes a lot of dedication and practice. Now see how that's just mm -mm, all over the place. Now I've washed that fan brush and I've reloaded it. Now let's try and pick up some of the stuff over here at the top. Hopefully we can get some of that red in. I've, I've, I think I've brushed away too much of that red. We'll see. Just like that. And the same again. Blend this into turmoil and mist into the sky. Bang, look at that. I'm on there, I'm just, how's it happening? How's it looking? We've got lighter elements, duller elements within these clouds. Spider them out. Don't have them looking too round and flat. Give them that beautiful luster. That's what I mean by when you practice something and you master it is because you put a lot of dedication, time and practice within that 
How's that looking? I'm not too happy with that. I want that a bit more just like that. Sitting it down. There we go. I'll set that down. Let's get into here. It's a hot day here today. Hopefully I'll get enough window time to blend this onto my retarded area. Not too bad. And what you can do, sometimes it gets all bland like that's looking. I'm going to add yumminess to that later. Okay, I want some white cloud here. Just there where I can try and pick up the um, reds there. And I want to turmoil and mist this into cloud as well. We're getting different colours. It's not just all one tone, one value. See, the edge of my brush has been stamping here, and I've noticed that. And I'm going to just gently sit that down as well. See this edge here, as I was doing that, was hitting it. I'm aware of that. I've got different size brushes if I want to change the blending footprint. And we'll put one more bit of white about here. So this is pretty much going to be in front there. And we've got stuff just hiding all these ugly brush strokes, just like that. And that's it. I want this one, if anything, coming in front of that, the illusion that it's in front of it. And like I said, with different size brushes, same brush, just different footprint. And we're getting this, I'm, I'll leave this a bit brighter than that back bit. There we go. How's that looking in the monitor? Fine. It's a bit too much of a cone shape, but I'll try and distort that. Yeah, my window of opportunity to blend on this retarder, like in my climate where it is today, it's just about ready to close, so I've just made it, because when I'm filming it takes longer to do the process. If I wasn't filming this would have been finished by now, but I've got to stop and start, so my window's still there. Now using that smaller fan brush that I had, I'm just cracking some yumminess in there. Now that was a cone shape, I put the yumminess across it to try and disguise that ugly shape that I wasn't happy with and this will change it into a totally different shape with a third dimension. Okay, see what that's done. Grab another brush, give us some more yumminess and just look where it's a bit palish, like up here somewhere, just bang and lightly touch that yumminess down, leaving the vibrancy of it there. If you've seen my videos before, you know what I'm on about, but if this is your first time here, share, like, and subscribe, and I guarantee you will have fun painting my clouds and skies, and I guarantee with some effort and practice, you can do it. There we go, I'm gonna stop now. I can keep doing this till the bloody cows come home. I've gotta to learn to stop. There we go, that's all my yumminess. So there's our sky. It's not the same as the reference picture, but it's similar, and I've got that nice warm area in the middle that I was looking for. Now that's dry, I'm gonna map in the rest with black gesso, because a lot of it's gonna have darkness there. So I've just got some black gesso out of the bottle here. I've got a little bit of water on my palette, so it's gonna transfer off the brush. Now, the main bit is the top. I want the top with this scratched in, and there's gonna be some water maybe down here, up there, coming out of that bit. And coming out of that bit. And this can just rock its way down, bang. Then we can just block all this in to the very bottom, okay? This is black gesso, it's gonna dry matte black or flat black. If just using a flat brush. I could have used my big putter on a brush, but this is doing the same job. I want to take my time. I've got my coffee there. I want to enjoy it. Now I've got that on there and I want to like even all this out now. And if there's too many big chunks, I'm going to scrape it off like a knife and pretty much put it back into my bottle. I don't want big globs there hindering my work I'm going to do next. So I'm just See what I'm doing there? I'm stroking it nice and even, getting it nice and flat. There we go. Okay, you can see what's happening now. I've dried all that black. I'm just having a, an enjoyable mouthful of my coffee. A bit of a like a 
relax mode in the video because I don't know if you know it or not, but I'm wearing myself out here doing this, but I enjoy doing it, but I need to take a break. And I thought, well, instead of having a break with the camera off, I'll share it with you. Uh, you can check out the links in the description below while we're having this little short break and check out my merchandise. Good stuff. All right, so now I'm going to get a pencil and a graphite pencil, just a normal lead pencil, and I'm going to map in, well, the top line's already there. I'm going to map in the undercarriage of the cliff. Like we've got the cliff face here and inside here is a um, the cave and we've got our water level probably about this high it's level but if anything it's lower on the right side compared to the picture and we've got stuff going deep within the cave there okay to create depth and insideness and then down here in the water i mean they've got a massive big stone there but i'm not going to do that i might do just lots of nice sunken pebbles under here like that all right. Now, next colours off the rank is titanium white again. I've got raw sienna dark. It's pretty similar to yellow oxide. I'm going to use that kind of flavour. I've got some burnt umber to darken it up and some black if I need it. And I'm going to use just a flat brush for this. So pretty much the flat brush I had wasn't bad, but it's all dirty, so I'm going to use this one. Now, I'm not putting any retarder in it. I want to grab just this colour on its own, and then I will lighten it up as well and this is going to create the rock face over that black gesso so i'm using a flat brush because i want to chisel it on there and i want to start i'll just move my coffee the the top face here has got to be reasonably sharp uh, but broken a bit and under here can be a bit broken creating the so i'm going to leave the top to last i want to just sort of create faces within this rock so I'm not really doing much thinking here I'm just hoping for the best here creating I'll use the brush that way it's sort of scallopy uh, I'm looking at the thing sort of come this way turn the brush around create different light up and down spots now that bottom area what I want to do pick this up I want to come along break it up but there's me line there, so I'm breaking it up, but staying with that line, and I want to kind of scrumble. So I'm wearing the paint off the brush. Better turn it around, there's none on that side. I'm wearing the paint off the brush, and I'll scrumble it. Get that away there. See, I don't want to bring bits way down there. It's going to spoil the illusion. We're going to scrumble that down into the depth of the cave. Put a bit more on there. Just scrumble that down. Just so this bottom edge is not tight in focus and sharp it's sort of like going down then in with the shadow on it okay so i've pretty much put that there and scrumbling it down into the blackness okay now i might just i'm just looking at the picture there's a big chunk maybe here that's jutting out so i'm trying to create that now i'll do the top bit i mean it looks a bit nonsensey at the moment now I'm getting the top nice and sharp, it's wet. I want it sharp against the sky. Let it break up as it comes along. Chisel it back on again. I know I'm having a bit of a waterfall there, so. Just getting the top nice and sharp. Now down here we've got some white. Let's start mixing up some a, a lighter value. This is thick, gluggy. There's no mediums in this. Now this doesn't have to be fully mixed either. It can be marbled. So I'm coming across the top now. It's nice and sharp. I don't want just a white line across here. I want to sort of see what I just did there. Oh, I'm nervous. Shake it up a bit, just like that. Look at something hitting just this corner and over here, long there, long there. There's veins of black within this. Now we're creating the other bits within, I hope. <laughs> Do that over there. And we'll try and scramble some of this from there up into there as well. And then the black that I've got, 
that's going to allow me to fine tune this any bits I went too loud and bright it's going to allow me to sit them down okay I'm kind of looking at the reference and kind of not um, I'm just hoping for the best here I've got no idea how this rocks going to work but I'm pretty sure it's going to show some kind of um, loveliness within it bit of a platform there by the looks in the reference something coming down there okay now I'm just stamping that same color onto my scrumbling brush and anything that looks a bit liney hard dotty I'm sort of going there like I do with clouds and I'm sort of this way that way getting the edges a bit more unlined softening them down a bit see what I'm doing I can get some of the first color as well and manipulate it it'll start joining everything together I'll show you in a minute I'll just get rid of a lot of these liney lines try not to go Ugh! over your sky otherwise you'll stuff it the last thing you want to do is get halfway through a painting and you stuff it eh? right oh so I've done that now I'm gonna get the first color okay and where the first colors work go back again see so those first time you put this color on the lighter color on you you mapped in the area the footprint for this color now this brush is just finding it up here and there and I've got some burnt umber there which is a really dark brown that's going to allow me to add more depth into this let's see what that does So I've cleaned that brush, I pick up some of this burnt umber. See these dark bits? We're going to kind of just accentuate them within the painting there, 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 a bit there, a bit there. Just accentuate it. That's a not, I'll use that word, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about. You're doing, I'm just accentuating the painting there, young boy. Go, okay. like I said, I'm not thinking, I'm just dancing around, hoping for the best. I, I sort of know what I'm doing, but it's just being artistic as well doing this. So, if you think, Ian, I can't do what you're doing for the hell of it, practice it. It's all it takes. If you can't do anything, practice it, okay? There we go. Now see here, that's just that matte black, the gesso, and we've got this mound here. That's gonna be like the rocks within there. I wanna get this area, get this brown, and keep darkening all this up, just willy-nilly all over the place. When I'm finished with this brown bit, if it looks too brown, I'll add some black with it. Like, I'm just gonna add some black now just to show you. So like, there, see what I just done? Because we want this deep within there look. So I'm still picking up the burnt umber. Don't ignore that black, I just did that there as an example. And this mound here, I'm sort of going in that a bit. I'm just sticky beacon inside its window, seeing what it's up to. Because it's gonna be a lovely island and I'm keen to see how it's gonna look. Well, not an island, but a bit like a stone shelf within the cave. So this is all deep and dark. And if anything, I'm going from left and right. I'm not just going up and down like I did with the above the rock. And some of this can start fine tuning that shadowed corner there at the bottom of that cliff face as well, okay? Now we're gonna get the lighter color and start putting these rocks in. Oh, I haven't even cleaned that brush, picking up the raw sienna dark now, and we're gonna start merging into that little rock shelf within the cave there. So where are we? It's here, but it's dancing into the black into nothing like that where are we and then i'll bring it a bit brighter as we come into the picture where are we going we've got some up there and some scattered along here a bit bright there now so i want to sort of scrumble it backwards into that darker brown pretty much like you do on the water you know when you're doing the white water brushing onto the sand okay that's the distant stuff disappearing into the shadows of the cave I just want to accentuate this a bit better it's looking a bit dumulating there we go look at that little squirrely 
saw him away, yes, he's all squirrely, cross strokes. Now I'm getting the raw sienna dark. I had some leftover yellow oxide there, I just put that for that. Now I'm getting that and some white, not too much white. Just enough to make it look like. So from there we're just going to do some little ones like this. Disappearing into there. Okay. Just dot them. Come a bit bigger as they come forward. So I'm getting all the background detail done now. It's got too much there. Okay, now we want to start doing some dot, uh, not dots, rocks, leaving black. Now I don't know if I've got the right brush here, I don't think I have. I want to leave some black within the middle of them. Now do some all sorts of big ones and small ones, different sizes, break it up a bit, get it looking artistic. Is that looking in the monitor? Not bad. Now it is a bit on the bright side, so I've just smashed in a little bit of burnt umber. You'll see the difference. There we go. Bit of burnt umber. And we're bringing it from there into here. There we go. We don't want it all, that's too bright under there. I'm going to touch it up a bit. Getting some more here. Leaving the blacks in between it all. Can have a big rock there, whatever. Water's going to sink this down when we get the water in there. So I'm kind of now dilly dallying within the black bits. Some of them are a bit too big. Now I've just added burn umber to that mix again. Now see the rocks we want to. Start, oh, get a bit darker there, can go a bit darker. We want to get some darker values of those rock tones there, okay? And then, if anything, if I need to, I can um, put black back within these rocks if they're too bright. Now I just want to highlight some of them. So just getting some white and tease it up a bit on our brush. There we go. Find the right value of this. You might be too dark or too bright. You might have to keep adjusting it. And I just want, is this bright enough? Yeah, it might get there. I just want certain bits highlighted, not the whole damn light, just like a, a pocket of lights coming through and hitting certain areas of it you know what I mean just gives it more of an artistic feel when you can create something like that in your work there we go I think that's working it's some of this lights sinking those darks back and working with each other what you need the lights and the darks within your painting that's good enough how far do you want to go the cows have come home ages ago now I'm just grabbing that black I told you I had and we're just going to sink some of the depth of that cave in. As I'm looking at it, I see brown a lot. We want it quite dark under here, so I'm reaching back. I'm painting loose. I want to come back from there. Just jingle jangle it. Bring it real deep in there. Think deep and you'll get deep. Glare's not killing it. I mainly want to get mainly under here, nice and dark, and participate that down to about halfway so it looks like it's the black ceiling within there. Alright, now we'll do the lower half of the painting. So I've got me black and burn umber again, and the, the water down here, I've dried this, the water at the bottom is pretty much black, but I don't want it black, so I'm going to mix up black and this brown. 
Now I'm looking at the reference and it's pretty much the water's coming there. I want to get it reasonably tight against there. Sink those rocks back with the water, pick up some more. There we go. Oh, that's good enough. Now I just want to paint the water. So we've got that, and we've got to put some shimmer in there. I'm just laying out the paint off the brush, and while it's still got a bit in there, I'm just sort of shakingly dancing some shadowy dark bits on these rocks here, the way it sort of is within the um, reference picture. Okay, just like that. I mean, we can get some, I'm not going to do it to this, but we could get some um, glaze and glaze over these rocks to set them down but I want to add the glistening effect to the water so as we don't get anything on our nice rocks I've just used some low tack tape to tape that up and we'll get a uh, toothbrush I'll just wet it a bit and load up some paint and I want a lot of glistening in the water Try not to get big blobs if you can help it, but I want it mainly concentrated where I'm going to have the waterfall hitting the surface of that water. So, yeah, concentrate, concentrate, Ian. This just acts like, you know, the light hitting the, the ripples, the scallops within the water. So many ways you can do this. Um, I still haven't mastered a particular way that I would like, but this will do. Now we'll take that tape off, so you get an idea of what I was doing. Okay. All right, we'll put the water in. Let's see if I can get these brushed across without stuffing it. Just some of those big, heavy ones. There we go. Wipe it on the board, turn your brush around and do the other bit. There we go. So I've dried everything and you want to look for a waterfall brush. I'm going to use a flat, probably different thicknesses for, I don't know, I reckon those two will do. And we just want, I suppose, the simplest titanium white. Okay, so we'll grab some titanium white here and load up a brush. Now you want it sort of scratchy, okay? So we'll start with this one first, and we'll just load him up. Don't bomb it on, just so we can get something scratching down the canvas. And we pretty much want the water to stop about here. Don't come all the way here, all right? So this bit that I made here, I'm gonna get the water coming down there, there we go, bang. Then we'll build it up like it's hit a ledge, oh, bloody ledge got in the way. Build it up, build it up, come past it a little bit. Okay, like that. And then we wanna, let's grab my stick. Now you wanna bring that down to the water surface, so we'll pretty much come down, straight down, in a straight line, about there. Stop there. Now it's a bit crooked, so we do got to try and get it a bit straight up. Push your brush. You want it broken up. I want to come from the bottom and come up this time, from about there. Nice and right, yeah, nice and straight. Crumble down from that point where you hit the ledge. There we go. Scramble down from there. And we've got all sorts of water tracing down to the bottom, see? It's not just all one thick water. A bit spurting out here. Push. Down to there. See what we've got now in the in the body of this, hang on, I'll get some more there first. There we go, 
the body's there. Or oh, the body's got to go down to there. Yeah, there we go. Hang on. See, everything's done behind this. Now we put some ribs in the water, just some simple ribs I'll show you. Get your brush long ways. I'm gonna have to wet it a little bit, just a little bit. It's very thick and dry, gluggish. And we just wanna get some darker bands coming down the water like that. Okay. Mainly from the top and they'll break up as they get lower. Just periodically put them here and there. Don't make a uniform pattern out of them. Just something like that. Oh. This is just one waterfall. We've got some little bits just drinking them down here. Like so. And it's sort of hitting a ledge as well. Crumble it down and then you do these however you feel and this is sort of squirting down in a longer line dropping down as well nice and straight Don't let that break up it's not a powerful one okay you can see what's happening I better zoom out a little bit and we'll just finish this one over here so we've got some more water hitting a ledge it's it's came from there, bang, hit the ledge. And this is pretty much coming down here as well, to about there. And we've got all sorts squirting down. I'll call these the ribs, but. And a bit more sort of jutted out from there where it hit bang. I'm trying to keep it straight here. I mean, I'll, I'll detail that water later. I'll come down a bit too low here, but. Now we want to sort of come along and just add our turmoil within the water. Twist it around, up, go up the funnel a little bit, just like that. Same on this one. It's all agitated at the base of that where it's entering the water there. You've got some agitation around there. I mean, it's a high waterfall, but it's not a lot of power, in my opinion. And a bit here, agitation of that. Okay, I've done as much as I need there. I can detail that if I like off camera, but you get the gist of it. I'm just gonna put my autograph on here and we'll whack a frame on it. So be sure to check out my links in the description below. Check out my merchandise. I wanna thank all my patrons who support me on my YouTube channel here. And uh, patrons get to see all the releases of my paintings weeks before they come out on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, we'll put Steve's little footprint on there as well, and then we'll whack a frame on it. And just remember, all my paintings are for sale. Oh yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, that's not too shabby. We've got a warm uh, evening sunsetting sky out in the bush, the outback, the rural areas, and we've got water coming over a cliff, a face, a cave, and the dark water there, okay? Just remember, you can do that. So thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun painting it today and like I said, check out the links in the description below. Share, like and subscribe if it's your first time here. All right. Tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, tell everybody, all right. Goodbye, good luck and good on you.